I thought initially it might be just a simple social club. And once I had some good mentors like Chris Palmer and Phil Ritchie and those guys kind of um, show me what else is out there. And I realized it's much more about uh, being a social club. It's actually helping the community. Our motto is a man never stands as tall as when he kneels down to help a child. That was really the, the number one reason why I decided to get in the club is because of their involvement with helping kids. That was truly the, the number one reason why I decided to get into the club, because I wanted to help. I wanted to be part of that. The Active 2030 Club has been a very important part of uh, the zoo and its progress and development. One of the first times I remember being very involved uh, was the Lion's Pride exhibit. The zoo had asked if we would come in and uh, not only help fund getting a new pride of lions, but if we would do some sweat equity and, um, and get in and, and, and rehab the exhibit. So we spent a uh, Friday evening and a Saturday uh, inside the lion exhibit, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, you know, yes, it was, it was hard work. We were, we were, you know, moving rocks and dirt. It really freshened the exhibit. They were able to bring in some new lions. Those are the lions that are there today. Just, just watching the kids' reactions, we as 2030 members, knowing that we had something to do with refreshing this exhibit and bringing it back, it was pretty cool. There is a plaque right there made possible by Topeka Active 2030 Club. The newest exhibit at the Topeka Zoo isn't really an exhibit, it is the polar ice cap. And the polar ice cap was 100% funded by the Topeka Active 2030 Club. And we've had one season of it being open, but looking forward, this is something at least for the next 20 years. And then I think you can flip the ice over and you get another 20 years on the other side. This is something that it will be the biggest draw for the winter months at the zoo. Obviously it helps the zoo in terms of attendance. It is the only place uh, outside of the Expo Center in limited times that kids can go skate. I couldn't be happier with everything that Topeka Active 2030 Club and the donors here tonight uh, uh, make possible through this one event. Through the years, the club has been very supportive of TARC. Since my first involvement in the, uh, the early 90s, um, I think we've given over $300,000 to uh, TARC. And they're a great recipient of it for a number of different reasons. One of the bigger requests in the later years was the, uh, the 2030 Right Place for Kids. There was a lot of discussion on it. It was a fairly large sum of money, but we felt committed um, in TARC and committed in our uh, mission statement and thought it was a good fit. It's a specialized playground for children with disabilities. It can be utilized by uh, physically and mentally handicapped kids. It's uh, really the only one in Northeast Kansas. And the playground is gorgeous and special and looks safe yet exciting and intriguing. And I think that uh, the people that get to have a, a connection with Tark need that. We all need to play. And um, hopefully it will inspire people to, um, to be even more involved with Tark. The fundraising effort that we did with Shelley Wright for the Right Place for Kids in Tark uh, was one of my most memorable events. Uh, to me, it was the ribbon cutting ceremony. What we take for granted as parents that you know my kids can run out and jump on any swing or slide or, or, or playground, to see it in person, not only how it affected the children, but it was probably the parents and the advisors at TARC that uh, how pleased they were and how, how appreciative they were of our efforts was, was uh, one of my fondest memories by far. Uh, a few years ago, when we had all the kids out to Toys R Us about 7 in the morning, uh, you know, it's like 40 degrees out. And we see all these kids, and a lot of them don't have jackets. And it kind of became a no-brainer. So I'm Justin with the Big Act of 2031. We, uh, we've established a, a program now that we see anywhere from 100 to 150 different kids every year. Uh, varying in ages, and from the cool high school kids that uh, are shy and don't want to uh, act like they want to cope, but they really like it in the end. Uh, all the way down to the little kids that are so cute. When you put on the little jacket, they're just smiling at you and you just want to hug them. One of my most uh, memorable occasions was uh, uh, Coats for Kids a couple years ago, and it was pretty cold in Kansas that year. These two little boys, and I could tell they were brothers, they kept whispering back and forth. And I asked them, I said, what are you, what are you guys whispering about? You know, and they said, I 
can't believe people are here getting us a coat. And, and we were talking about how this morning, how we didn't want to go outside and play. And it was just to me, it was that, that again, it's that you feel so good about what you do at that time. Um, it makes it to where you'd never miss it again. This is one of the few opportunities that someone's reached out and helped them out just beyond taking them in and everything, but actually give them the opportunity to pick out whatever they want. And, you know, not only do you get a coat, you get a hat and you get gloves. And when you walk out the door, you know, you, it makes you feel good like you did something special that day. Christmas for Kids is the biggest thing that the club looks forward to every year. It's our moment to reach down and help a kid up, and, and maybe just the child, but also the family that's taking care of that child at that moment. This is our time to kind of reach out and uh, leave that lasting impression on them that there are people out there, uh, like the people in the crowd, that uh, want to do something extra. And maybe when they're in the store just every other day, they don't have that opportunity to help them, but this is the time of year we can do it. I had uh, three little kids and they knew right what they wanted. Um, they went straight for some, uh, they, they're getting some bikes for Christmas, so they need some helmets. Um, their uh, foster parent was uh, all about the safety, so that's what they got today. Right. Good to meet you guys. I had a six month old, Jason, and he wanted an extra saucer and got him set up with that and a, a bitey toy. Show me your necklace. The start of it was, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that. <laughs> Hold on there, big boy, so do I. <laughs> we, they were great. They were, once we figured out what we were going to do, they started adding and everything. Great time. They were awesome. We got little cars, we got a little monster truck. Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. Their eyes are huge. That's the best part. I can have whatever, yeah, whatever you want, buddy. <gasps> it was great. Good time. We were at Toys R Us, and of course it's early in the morning before the store opens. And uh, I had two, um, two girls, uh, I don't know, probably the age, under the age of five that didn't speak any, any English at all. And the mother was very broken on how much English she spoke. I'll never forget, we're going down and we're picking out these Dora items and some Barbie dolls and, and we get to the counter and um, I could hear her kind of saying gracias or thank you. And she, I look at her and she's holding back and wiping back tears. And I'm a pretty big guy, but at that moment, it was pretty hard to keep the tears back. And you could just tell it, it had been stressing on her that she may not be able to get these kids a gift. And uh, it, it made you feel good. And, and, and uh, it's one of the few times I remember where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry in Toys R Us. After they get to pick out a, a gift that they like. Okay, how many eggs can I get you? Uh, we take them over the pad, and they've been fantastic. Uh, they have a great spread of food, and, and there again, it's the opportunity they can have as much as they want, as many orange juices and milks as they want. It's one of those special times that being in 2030 Club that you look forward to every year, this small interaction with kids, it leaves an impression on you that you want to do it every year, and just to see the kids' faces smiling on the way out, it's great. I now understand why being gala chair is so important. Some of the prior gala chairs have shared with me how important it was to, to make this event come off. Uh, it is our only opportunity throughout the year to raise the money that we use to distribute funds uh, for the entire year. So every program that we support, every child that receives a donation, uh, is, it's, this money is collected tonight. Funding these children's charities is basically planting seeds to grow. 2030, by being involved in these charities, by being directly affecting youth to try to make their lives better in this community will ultimately help Topeka. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we all care about things. Everybody in the world wants to do good things, but when a, a group of strong, focused, uh, mindful people get together and have an objective like the 2030 Club has done with the charitable things for kids, it's pretty unstoppable. And their generosity with TARC is uh, part and parcel with what that's about. It's people using their power. If you like your community and you're gonna stay here, you need to make sure that it's a good place to live, a good place to raise family. And part of that is raising money for organizations that benefit the entire community. 
You know, in the last 10 years, we've raised over a million dollars. It still surprises me to this day that there's 65 guys in their 20s and 30s that are doing this, and, and you wouldn't think that we could agree on, on, on anything if we were all in one room, and yet we're able to, to pull this event off year after year after year. Thank you. All of the money tonight, everything, will go directly towards children's charities. I encourage everyone here to not be bashful about bidding more for that trip than you think it's worth or for spending more money on an item just because uh, you know it's worth 200 you might as well go for the 250 This is the event of the year that makes it possible for the Topeka Active 2030 Club to go out and use that money to make the biggest impact in the community. It just gives me pleasure to try to help a kid give them a little bit better of a quality of life or or do something for them that'll help them have some kind of a memory. I hope that some of the stuff that I do for these kids, that uh, even though they don't know me or never will meet me, but maybe they'll, you know, have some kind of impression that they'll get that maybe they'll grow up and, and wanna try to help somebody else. It's a grassroots effort to help these kids. And uh, why not take care of our own here in Topeka? Once you see and been around these situations, you feel compelled to do it every year, and that's why I'm proud to be a part of this organization.